Peter Lawford, a lesser known member of the infamous Rat Pack. Most people can quickly name the others. Frank Sinatra, Dean Martin, and Sammy Davis Jr. Go ahead, a little more, maybe. Loosen up. But Peter wasn't quite as A-plus famous as his counterparts. But that didn't stop him from having just as much fun and enjoying the connections along the way. Hey, let's give Dean a chance. So let's find out the startling truth on how a childhood injury helped launch Peter's career, and just why Lawford's Rat Pack membership was eventually revoked, and what JFK had to do with the entire situation. I'm Nostalgic Nick for Do You Remember? And if you enjoy the rewind, please click the thumbs up icon, and make sure you're subscribed so you never miss a beat. But before we get to Peter Lawford, first let's meet the coolest group of crooners of all time, aptly titled The Rat Pack. An esteemed group of Hollywood stars led by Humphrey Bogart. The first grouping included the likes of Cary Grant, Spencer Tracy, Errol Flynn, Katherine Hepburn, Judy Garland, Nat King Cole, and Old Blue Eyes himself, Frank Sinatra. After Bogart's death, this group of drinking buddies dissolved, until Sinatra refashioned his Rat Pack including his peers, Dean Martin, Sammy Davis Jr., and Joey Bishop, all of whom were extremely talented. You may be my leader, but I'm gonna punch you right in your mouth. And then you got to Peter Lawford, whose inclusion stuck out like a sore thumb. As although Lawford enjoyed plenty of film roles in the 40s and 50s, after which he was pretty much famous for just being famous. Some speculate he was offered membership in the Rat Pack because he was married to JFK's sister, but more on that relationship in a bit. Lawford's Early Life Born in London, England on September 7, 1923, his parents were not married at the time, well, at least to each other. His father had been a British World War I hero, and his family was connected to the English aristocracy. In 1930, Peter began acting in films at just seven years old. His first credit was in the 1931 film Poor Old Bill as Horace. But after the affairs, divorces, new marriage, and the constant traveling, which had Peter growing up mostly in France. The family finally moved to America for a fresh start. Unfortunately, and not coincidentally, it was also in line with the growing unrest in Europe and the eventual explosion of a world war. A war that would have detrimental and beneficial effects for the Lawford family. Injury and War at age 14, Peter badly injured his arm by crashing through a glass door. The doctor saved the arm, but it was slightly deformed and bothered him throughout his life. But such was his luck, that injury kept him out of the draft for World War II. The Lawford family felt the war even in America, as all their British assets were frozen and the family stranded in Florida. Peter took a job parking cars, and after saving enough money, he went off to Hollywood, where he supported himself first working as a theater usher until finally he began landing acting work work that was now available because of the World War. Not only were many actors serving their country overseas, but the amount of war stories and British soldiers needed were bountiful, and Peter Lawford was now a hot commodity. Fruitful 40s Lawford's first major role came in the 1942 film A Yank at Eaton, and by the mid-40s he was booking larger and larger pictures, like The White Cliffs of Dover in 1944, and in 45 he was a part of the notable Oscar-winning film The Picture of Dorian Gray. Lawford's acting ranged from serious roles to lighter musical bits, and after the war ended things brightened up in Hollywood too. In 1946 he was a part of the esteemed romantic comedy Clooney Brown. Brown. And the year after, he played a musical quarterback, Tommy Marlowe, in Good News, and the public ate it up. Right, for only 10 cents, one cent part of a dollar, you will actually see the little lady descend these stairs facing one dainty foot before the other. He kept right on dancing to the Fred Astaire led Easter Parade, and as the decade came to a close, he enjoyed one of his better cast opportunities in the well received classic film Little Women, wonderfully portraying the role of Laurie. TV and Forbidden Love 
In 1951, Peter met actress Dorothy Dandridge after going to see her in a show in Las Vegas, and the two began a love affair as Dandridge was enamored with the Brit, saying, quote, He had a free and easy style of living, talking, and thinking. A touch of Errol Flynn about him. All she wanted was for Peter to say, marry me. But alas, the times had their control, and Peter ended the relationship because of fear of what an interracial marriage might do to his career. The 1950s also began another chapter for Lawford. Television. He played the lead Bill Hastings on 32 episodes of Dear Phoebe, as well as amateur detective Nick Charles on The Thin Man from 57 to 59. And you can't overlook the exposure of this television success, because it was while he was on The Thin Man that Frank's Rat Pack began to form. Welcome to the Pack. In 1959, Frank Sinatra officially invited Lawford to join the Rat Pack even going as far as getting him a role in 1959's Never So Few. And although it's not great, it does have Steve McQueen, which is pretty sweet. And then 1960 ushered in the jackpot, Ocean's Eleven. Lawford had bought the rights for the film in 1958, originally imagining William Holden as Ocean. But once Peter was in the pack and Sinatra got wind of the script, it was all in. Marriages and JFK. After his relationship with Dandridge ended, Peter wound up marrying Patricia Kennedy in 1954, becoming the brother-in-law to John F. Kennedy, the future President of the United States. They would have four children together before divorcing in 1966. Lawford's affairs may have had a lot to do with this, being known to consume copious amounts of alcohol, you know, rat pack life. Dean keeps saying, hurry up, how many more? So right, keep drinking, you'll be all right. But just because his first marriage didn't work out, it didn't mean he didn't try again. He was married an additional three times. In 1971, he married Mary Rowan, the daughter of famed laugh-in comedian Dan Rowan. But the pair divorced four years later. Then Deborah Gould for just one year in 1966. And finally, his fourth marriage to another Patricia, this time Patricia Seaton in 1984. Just months before his death, though they had been together since the days of wife number three, I would come home and find old girlfriends in the house. And Peter Lawford and Frank Sinatra famously helped with JFK's 1960 campaign. Do you remember watching that first televised debate? The infamous Kennedy-Nixon debate took place on September 26, 1960 in Chicago. And Kennedy looked calm, cool, and collected, especially in contrast to Nixon's nervous and sweaty demeanor. Well, Kennedy had been learning from Lawford on how to appear on camera, and ultimately became to politics what Frank Sinatra was to music. The the connection was obvious. JFK and the Rat Pack didn't hesitate to use each other's fame to further their own agendas. At least they all knew why they were there. This influence aided his eventual win, and Peter himself was even able to vote for JFK because he had recently received his American citizenship. The Falling Out Frank Sinatra never let Lawford forget the Rat Pack's influence on him. He was given the nickname Brother in Lawford, alluding to his marriage into the Kennedy family as a reason they kept him around. While JFK and the Rat Pack were enjoying major success, a downfall was coming for them all. Robert F. Kennedy, JFK's younger brother, soon grew worried about Frank's ties to the Mafia, and Robert came in and basically ruined all the fun. Yes. It's obvious now. Lawford apparently set JFK up with several Hollywood leading ladies. Remember, JFK was married to Jackie Kennedy with a beautiful family, so yeah, not great. In 1962, Lawford set JFK up with Marilyn Monroe and worked as a liaison between the two, some even alluding that he might have been involved in her death. As that liaison, Lawford invited JFK to come stay at Frank Sinatra's Palm Springs home. <laughs> Hey, you look terrific, Pete. Thank you, Sam. I had a few days rest in the springs before I came to town. Which had recently been upgraded to facilitate the President of the United States, even building a helipad on the premises. But at the last minute, Bobby Kennedy insisted that the President not go for security reasons. Bobby was trying to distance the President from the pack. And Lawford got to be the bearer of bad news to Frank, who was extremely embarrassed, especially because JFK stayed with Bing Crosby in 
instead. So a red hot Frank Sinatra boiling mad directed all of his anger at their connection to JFK. The poor Peter Lawford. And so Frank wrote Peter Lawford out of every upcoming Rat Pack film. And their friendship, if there ever was one, was officially over. They only spoke one other time. When Sinatra called Peter after his son Frank Sinatra Jr. was kidnapped in 1963 and once again needed the help of Lawford's brother-in-law, Robert F. Kennedy, who at this time was Attorney General. Peter's later life was filled with game shows and celebrity life, but his alcohol problems just worsened and eventually he developed a drug addiction. He tried to get clean on several occasions, but it never lasted. His final acting credit was in the film Gypsy Angels released in 1990 after his death as Peter Lawford passed away on Christmas Eve in 1984 at the age of 61. Actor Peter Lawford, who appeared in some 60 movies and starred in television's Thin Man series, died today in a Los Angeles hospital. So, do you recall seeing any of these Lawford flicks that I mentioned? Or is there another great one that I forgot? Get in the comments and tell me what film you best connect Peter Lawford to. And give me your opinions on his boot from the Rat Pack. Was it fair? Do you remember it happening? We welcome all the details in the comments below. As always, don't forget to smash that thumbs up icon and subscribe to the channel so you never miss a memory. But from all of us here at Do You Remember, thank you very much for watching.